Patience as a spiritual practice. Ah, the wizardry of patience. Time is a weirdly funny thing when it comes to us humans. It can drag, it can fly by, it can take forever or happen in an instant. Because of this, time is the first thing we usually associate with being an illusion, once we accept the physical realm as an illusion anyway. In my current live-in caregiving gig for 93-year-old Hilbert, I've become more sensitive to time awareness. Hilbert spends his days mostly chair-bound, rarely able to leave his apartment without a lot of help to go to the doctor's office. He has a quip that he likes to make, Another day, another 15 cents, as he grins. He ruminates freely about how the pace of life has changed so much and how people have seemed to become so self-absorbed and uninterested in their own activities. I argued that the stressors of life have rendered so many of us wrapped up in economic concerns and the relational backwash of it that we are unable to pull our heads out of you-know-where. It seems the faster technology pushes us to go, the less amount of attention we have to live full, expansive lives. On a quantum level, of course, time becomes just another dimension, such as width, length, and height. In fact, time could run backwards or suddenly turn into a future that affects a current state. These are considered common quantum quirks. These effects are happening to our human experience, too, but we have that handy tool, the mind, to keep everything in a linear flow, when in reality, there is no such thing. Yet, as a major part of the human experience, the forward flow of time is a basic reality, without which there could be no commerce, no language, or perception of manifestation through personal efforts or power. In other words, time affords us a sort of linear playground upon which to express ourselves and to actualize the experiences we desire. This is where the practice of patience comes in. As some wise person said, time exists so that everything doesn't happen at once. True enough, yet if we take into account imagination, it's not quite so true. We have desires that first instantly appear in our imaginations, which then begin their descent into our physical experiences. The imaginary fulfillment of a desire is the instantaneous existence of the desire as a certain vibration or vibratory rate. If we can hold that manifestation in our imaginations long enough, the vibratory rate of it will begin to match the vibratory rate of the desire manifested. The crux of the matter is time, of course. Most of us surround our desires with wall after wall of judgments and conclusions that all but ensure the desire remains only in the imaginary realm. By opening ourselves up to the possibility of our desire actually appearing in the physical world, then the primary mental and spiritual practice becomes patience. We wait. We maintain. We watch. During this sensitive coalescence period, we remain committed and pure of intent with our birthing desire. This allows all sorts of blockages to arise to be cleared. Everything from the, how many more miles, daddy, to, this is taking forever, to, what if it never happens? Yes, what if? Good question. The answer is that this is a moot question. Because doing the spiritual work of actualizing a desire, that question cannot be entertained since by asking it, more and more time is injected into the actualization of the desire. Since we are immortal spiritual beings, we actually have forever, so again, the question is moot. Treat the practice of patience as the secret sauce to the manifestation of your desires and watch the magic happen. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy RX. www.pureenergyrx.com.